What if February had 30 days? By African Vulture. We all know that February is the month of love because of Valentine's Day. It's also unique because it normally has 28 days and sometimes 29. But what if February had 30 days, just like the other months? Before we explore that fun question, we first need to understand why February has 28 or 29 days and how it plays an important role in keeping the year well balanced. On the calendar, most months have 30 or 31 days. January, March, May, July, August, October, and December have 31 days, while April, June, September and November have 30. But then there is February, the shortest month, normally with 28 days and sometimes 29. Not only is February the shortest, but it's also the most unique. Why is that? Why doesn't it have 30 or 31 days like other months? What makes February so special? Let's find out. First off, it's because of the early Roman calendar created by Romulus, which had only 10 months, from March to December, totaling up to 304 days. Second, around 713 BCE, King Numa Pompilius added January and February to the calendar to align the year based on the lunar cycle, making it a total of 354 days in a lunar year. He assigned February to have 28 days, in order to align the total numbers of 354 days in a lunar year, possibly because of even numbers were considered unlucky in Roman culture. Third, while the Roman calendar was still misaligned with the solar year, in around 46 BCE, Julius Caesar added a leap day to February which occur on every four years. In order to align with the four seasons, he chose February to have a leap day for its adjustment because it is already the shortest month of the year. This made a total of 365 days a year as of today. Fourth and lastly, in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII introduced the Gregorian calendar to correct the small error that Julius Caesar that caused the seasons to drift over, over centuries. He made rules for leap years. Every leap year occurs every four years. A leap year is divisible by 400 years, but not 100 years. This refinement made a total of 365.2422 days a year. Now, let's see how leap days and leap years really work in the next chapter for more clarification. What is a leap day? A leap day is an extra day that is added to the calendar to help keep the Earth's orbit to be well balanced within the calendar year. It occurs on February 29th and only happens in leap years. Now let's get on to the definition of a leap year and how they do really work. What is a leap year? A leap year is a year that includes an extra day on February 29th. It helps the calendar to align with the Earth's orbit around the Sun. It gives a year a total of 366 days. A normal year takes 365.2422 days. It takes 5.8 hours to make an extra day which it's a leap day. Without leap years or leap days, our calendars would gradually shift out of the alignments of the seasons. That's how a leap year really work. Now let's get into how leap years are calculated. How are leap years calculated? How do we know if it is a leap year or not? There are rules for calculating leap years. First, if a year is divisible by 4, then it is a leap year. Second, if a year is however divisible by 100, then it is not a leap year. Third, unless the year is also divisible by 400, then it is a leap year. Still not sure and want to find out? Then go online on a leap year calculator website to find out. It's really quick and simple. Why are they called leap days and leap years? The term, leap year, comes from the way the calendar changes in those years. 
When a leap day is added, it pushes the calendar forward by two days instead of one. It's like a frog leaping onto the lily pad that represents the leap year. So that's pretty much explains why the frog represents the leap day and leap year. What if someone was born on February 29th? Those who were born on February 29th are known as leaplings or leap year babies. Since February 29th only happens every four years, they technically have fewer birthdays. But don't worry, even if their actual birthdays don't appear in normal years, leaplings can still celebrate their birthdays on either February 28th or March 1st. How are people born on February 29th? Well, here is a fun fact. The odds of being born on a leap is 1 in 1461, which it's very rare. That means the possibility of being born on the leap day is less than 0.07%. As of February of 2025, the current world population is 8.2 billion people. Approximately 4.1 million people worldwide were born on the leap day. That makes a percentage of less than 0.05% out of the world's current population, which it's very rare. Now that we understand why February has 28 or 29 days and how leap years work, let's imagine a change. Since February sits between two months with 31 days, what if we give it 30 days instead? Let's see what happens. If February had 30 days, then it would make it a total of 367 days a year. If February had 30 days, it would overlap our calendars of the Earth's orbit. If February had 30 days, it would disrupt the lunar cycle time. Lastly, if February had 30 days, it would misalign with the lunar holidays, such as Easter, Chinese New Year and more. Our current system is designed to keep the Earth's orbit the moon's cycle, the seasons, and important holidays aligned. Changing February to have 30 days would throw off their balance, making our calendar inaccurate. So, even though it seems fair to give February 30th days like other months, it would cause chaos for timekeeping, holidays and nature itself. So it's easier to keep February to have 28 or 29 days that way. So while February may seem like the odd one, it's actually a key of our carefully balanced calendar. Imagine how different the world would be if we changed just those two days. Would it be really worth it?